You know, it's one thing to pray for a need in crises. But it's another thing to pray that same thing day after day after day after day. We want evidence there's an answer. And you and I know sometimes it doesn't seem to be there. God's answers to us in prayer are yes, no, and maybe. And I think most of the time it's maybe. So many of us just get to the point when we're praying, we say, how long, Lord? Like the Old Testament saying. Or we say, grief is in my heart. Relieve it, Lord. And sometimes it comes, sometimes it doesn't. The parable that we had last week about the one of the ten lepers that came to Jesus and only one that came back to thank him. Those people were in crises with a disease. And they asked the petition prayer. Nine of them forgot to give thanks and praise. One did. He didn't give up on the fact of knowing that he was gifted by God with the gift of healing. Today's reading about this dear woman that's so persistent has something to say to us about persistence in prayer because all of us have to have encouragement here. It could be because of the fact we're praying for intentions that relate to a job or justice or peace or love or something in reference to our health or death. Every one of us are praying for something. And most of the time it's not complete inside. It doesn't seem to be there. So we beg the Lord to build us up and help us out. Every one of us have our stories. And every one of us know the difficulties with this prayer thing. But it's the deep part of the mystery of God and the love of God that has to be implanted here in each one of us to know that we never give up. If there's anything to be said about the gospel today, I think it would have to be the words, keep on keeping on. Don't give up. Keep on keeping on. There's another thing that happens here. In this community, I know it so well for. And when you can't handle your grief and your difficulty and your pain, you must get the help of others. And that's what comes through so commonly to me in prayer about how supportive people are in prayer, in need, when somebody knows the need of another. I would say this morning that uh, personally for you, as I stand before you, Father Mellon, I both need your prayers. Very much so. Father Mel is going through a very difficult time because the earthquake that hit the Philippines was a 7.2 earthquake last week. His mother's house was destroyed and she's living in a tent in the street. His sister's house was destroyed and she's living in another tent. His, uh, the mother-in-law of his brother that lives a couple miles away his mother-in-law died with a crash from the ceiling and devastation in the house. And the mother-in-law of his sister, who lost her home, also died. So the devastation for him is tremendous in the sense of the loss. He'll be leaving for the Philippines probably Tuesday or Wednesday to be with his family because they're destitute. They have no place. They have no home. All destroyed. The church down the block was totally in rubbles. Think of this church just collapsing and collapsed completely. So Father Mel needs your prayers and your support and I hope that you'll give it to him in your prayers this week as he goes forth to help his family. I need your support and prayers as I've asked for them regularly over the past weeks. Last night at 6.30 my sister died. Second sister in eight months. Uh, that's difficult. 
my family's here today. Some of them. And we prayed for this. She's, she endured a lot for eight years. Uh, ever since my other sister in died eight months ago, she's gone through her difficulty with health all the way for, to a brain tumor. And finally, death came after several deep, deep weeks of problems with her health. And finally, death. The prayers I need is just support for to be uplifted. So does my family. But you know, one of the things we've learned, and I know I can speak for the family about this, is it's amazing how prayerful we become during this time. Not that we're not a prayerful group. I think we are. But we're like every family, like every individual and other families, where prayer sometimes slips by us and we maybe don't offer it all the time. Maybe we put our petitions out, but we don't praise and thank God enough for what we have. And so, one of the things I've felt from family, and I've heard it over and over again in phone calls and text messages, is our prayer has been very constant during this time. And it's lifted us up every time because of the support we've gotten, we get from each other. And I share it with you because... Never doubt the value of your prayer, even if it seems to be unending. Eventually, it will be rewarded. And I praise God today for the peace my sister finally attained after so many months of agony, and that she's at peace. So that's what I'm thankful for. But I can't go this alone either. None of us can And that's where your prayer support is so very important. Never doubt it. Always give it. And you'll know the peace that comes from it. And when I know that, my heart gives me a lot of confidence to go on and to endure what we have to through funerals coming up next Monday, a week from Monday. So, what I'm saying this morning is something I know every one of you could speak Does every one of you have your problems with your life? Probably in the decisions you have to make and how you need support. And I offer that in prayerfulness for you today, too, in this community. But I hope that you'll remember Father Mel, especially as he goes forth in a very difficult time with family. And I hope you'll remember my intentions and my family, too. Let's stand and pray.